okay so i think i am audible and visible to all of you so please uh, do confirm in the chat guys if i am audible and visible <coughs> Yes, I am audible. My voice is loud and clear, so please do let me know if you are uh, able to hear me, if you are able to see me. <coughs> yeah, good afternoon, good afternoon to all. So today is a uh, today is the day ten and. Uh, we have completed day nine uh, actually so nine lectures successfully uh, related to this generative ai so we started last week uh, last week on monday and so far uh, we have completed nine lecture and today is a uh, is the day 10 so today actually i will be discussing about few more uh, advanced topic and then uh, next week i will try to complete one more project uh, which will be related to the uh like which will be related to the to this today's topic uh, this reg and this vector database and all so we have started from very basic and then i came to the uh, langchain and open ai and then i discuss about the hugging phase then uh, i completed one project as well we deployed also and then uh, i came to this uh, vector databases uh, so now uh, if you are following me so i have uh, already told you regarding the dashboard and all so where you will find out all the dash uh, all the materials and uh, how to navigate to the dashboard okay so where you will find out the recorded session here in the uh, like uh, this is the iniron youtube channel so once you will go through with the iniron youtube channel so just click on that click on the iniron youtube channel here my live is going on as of now so just just click on this live section just go through with the live section and here you will find out all the videos now uh, if you will click on this particular video where i have discussed about the vector databases so in my previous session i have discussed about the vector databases i told you that what is a vector database why why it is required and then we have created one qa system also based on the embedding so if you don't know about it if you have uh, if you haven't seen this uh, session so please go and check there are uh, your all the basics will be clarified and uh, once you will go through with the entire session all the session if you are a beginner so definitely guys this uh, session is going to help you a lot related to the generative ai and all so i would uh, recommend uh, this uh, particular series to all of you uh, because soon we are going to end and this one and uh, next week actually so next week i uh, will try to do one more project that is going to be an end-to-end -end project which will be directly related to this uh, vector database and all there we are going to use everything i even will introduce the llama model in that a particular session in though in the upcoming session which is going to start from the monday today i'll be stuck with the vector database itself because there is one more database which i need to discuss then i then only you can make a differences between uh, uh different different vector databases so that's why i picked one more database that's going to be a chroma db so in today's class we're going to talk about the chroma db how chroma db works how it is different from the pine cone and uh, on which basis on which uh like uh, on which basis actually we have to decide that uh, what should be my database for my end-to-end -end project or for my uh, industry ready project so each and everything we're gonna discuss over here we're gonna uh, like uh, I will tell you in a live session so here is I on YouTube channel where you will find out all my recordings so guys please go through with the on YouTube channel and try to check with the description so in the description actually we have already given you the dashboard link so here in the dash uh, in the description you will find out the dashboard link this is the dashboard just click on that and this is a this is completely free right no need to pay anything for this particular dashboard i am telling to the people who uh, joined this session first time now here what you need to do here you just need to register yourself and after that uh, you will get uh, access of this particular course no need to pay anything you just need to sign up and log in and then you can navigate to this particular course now once you will go through with the course once you will go through with the dashboard so there you will find out all the recording now let's uh, go through with the previous recording so here uh, is a recording of the day 9 so just click on that and here in the resource section you will find out all the resources so whatever resources i uh, 
discuss in the class uh, throughout the entire session so you will find out each and everything inside the resource section so i discussed this uh, ipvnb file so this ipvnb file is available over here so you can visit the dashboard you can download this file and you can execute inside your system and you can revise your concept now here apart from this uh, lectures and resources you will find out the quizzes you will find out the assignment so just uh, visit this uh, particular dashboard and there you will find out everything and the link has been mentioned inside the description itself so just go and check in the description uh, we have already given you the link here is a link so just click on that and try to enroll yourself uh, uh, in the dashboard now apart from that you will find out other social, me social media handles and uh, different different channels of the i need on so please try to follow there we are uploading amazing content related to the uh, like uh, related to the different different topics so just just uh, follow to uh, just follow i need on on the instagram and the other youtube channel as well like hindi youtube channel let's see once you will check with the hindi youtube channel so here let me show you this hindi youtube channel of the i need on there you will find out a same playlist in the hindi as well so there i have discussed each and everything in hindi if you finding out a difficulty right say if you are finding out a difficulty uh, like you are not getting anything in english so here you can cover a same thing right you can cover the same thing in hindi as well here uh, we have uploaded all the hindi session right i have, i'm taking the hindi session uh, so you can go and check this i need on tech hindi channel and here you will find out the sql series as well so we are taking live sql classes now see uh, this uh, this is a saurabh actually saurabh is taking a live sql classes and we are uh, covering each and everything whatever is required for the data science for the data analytics and for the data engineering job so guys please try to check with the uh, i need on tech hindi there we are uploading uh, like refined content or whatever uh, is a trending thing in a hindi itself and not even a single video we are uploading a complete a uh, playlist so you uh, must visit this particular channel and you should check with the uh, content now coming to uh, coming back to my topic so here already we have discussed uh, so many thing now today is day 10 of of, of this particular uh, of this uh, comedy series so now let's start with the day 10 where the topic will be a chroma db so yesterday i have talked about the pine cone so pine cone was a vector database uh, so we use this vector database for storing a vector right now here we have one more db that's going to be a chroma db so we'll try to talk about the chroma db as well and we'll see the differences between this pine cone and the chroma db that how it is are different from each other this pine cone and the chroma db now one more thing which i would like to highlight over here see many people ask about the certificates and all so let's say if someone is going to complete the course right someone is going to complete the course so definitely in their mind there will be a, a like question so will i get a certificate or not so that thing also you will find over here over the lms itself so you will find out three options on top of this uh dashboard the first is curriculum the second is analytics and the third is certificate so here you'll find out the entire curriculum here you'll find out your entire analytics so what all thing you have completed are you doing assignment or not each and everything you can uh track over here inside this analytics portal now the third one is a certificate so if you are going to complete at least 40 percent of the course right if you are going to complete at least 40 percent of the course then definitely you will be able to generate the certificate now how like the course uh that uh, that will be that uh, how uh, like uh, the course will be completed right so how my system will get to know and then only you can generate a certificate see after completing a video after completing this particular video here you will find out the tick mark this this particular mark this blue tick mark so that mean the meaning is that so you are uh you have completed that particular video and the course name is what the course name is a foundational or generative ai foundation of generative ai now uh, once you will tick mark on this particular video it will be completed and now you can check inside the analytics also so here just uh, look into the analytics so your video progress uh, will be there right so you will find out the video progress over here so yeah this is fine this is clear to all of you now please go and check with the dashboard there you will find out each and everything now apart from that uh, one more thing which i would like to show you uh, so it uh, i will uh, i would like to introduce you 
uh, with one uh, dashboard one more dashboard so let me show you that particular dashboard so just go inside the course section and here uh, inside the course section you will find out this generative ai right inside this boot camp now just click on that just click on this particular course so there is a course name is mastering generative ai with open ai Langchain and Llama index. Just scroll down till last, and here you will find out a complete detailed syllabus of of for this particular course. Now here actually we are going to cover each and everything related to the generative AI. We are going to start from very basic, from the foundation of a generative AI, and then we'll come to the like word embedding, text preprocessing. We'll talk about the LLMs. We'll talk about the Hugging Face API and other different APIs as well, and we'll talk about the a link chain llama index these are the different different framework basically which we use for creating an llm based application and then you will find out end to end project also so, so this entire curriculum is an industry ready curriculum and we have added so many things recently or we are updating this particular syllabus uh, so there are uh, so many things coming uh, on like day to day actually so we are analyzing all those things and we are finding out so whatever is required for the industry whatever is required for the community so definitely we'll, we'll, based on that we are trying to update our syllabus so tomorrow itself you will look into the syllabus you will find out a new changes right because many things is coming uh, like day to day right so regarding the fine tuning regarding the like evaluation of the model regarding the uh, like uh, fast retrieval right so uh, regarding the fast retrieval regarding the different different databases or different different llm so based on that only based on a current market we are updating this curriculum so just go and check uh, over there just go and check with the iNeuron website and there you will find out amazing curriculum and yes so this course is going to be start from 20 uh, 20th of January right and here you will find out the language we have launched this particular course in English and here the duration is around five months and this is going to be a timing so timing is from 10 to 1 p.m. IST and this will be a live course right and here you will find out your instructors so Chris sir is there so is there me uh, is there and here is a puppy so puppy will also take a session uh, means puppy will also be a mentor along with me Sudan Susan and Chris sir. so guys uh, please go and check uh, with this particular dashboard with this particular course and for the further information you can contact with the sales team here you can drop your information so my sales team will contact to you fine so I hope I have clarified each and everything now if you have any sort of a doubt you can ask me and then we'll start with the practical implementation <coughs> tell me guys uh, do you have any doubt Sir, where to find Neurolab code for the MCQ generator project? It is not updated on GitHub. So here is my GitHub, which I already uh, uploaded in my resource section. You can go and check with the resource section. Let me give you that uh, GitHub just a second. And don't worry, I will be pasting inside the chat also. Mm, just go with my repository, my GitHub repository. There you will find out this MCQ generator, right? There, this is the application, mm, not this one, this one, generative AI so let me open this generative ai and yeah this is the applic this is the complete application which i added in my uh, resource section also let me show you where you will find out that so foundation generative ai course and here is the this is the <laughs> just wait first let me give you this particular link and then uh, i will show you so i'm giving to my team and they will uh, directly paste inside the chat okay just wait fine now i think we can start so guys uh, all clear sir estradv is a vector database or it's a no sql database it's a no sql database ramesh estradv actually in a backend it is using the cassandra and cassandra is a no sql database <coughs> yesterday i discussed that uh, whether you can use or not this uh, estradv this cassandra is a vector database i given you the each and every information regarding that just just look into that just uh, go through with my previous session you will get to know oh great now i hope everyone is getting that so can we start here is a pine cone one 
so please give me a quick confirmation if we can start with the session then uh, i will uh, start writing the code so let me open my code share.io also here i am going i am going to paste each and everything each and every line so i will okay let me give you this particular link also uh, i am giving you this code share.io link mm, just a second yeah this one so just a second guys you will get this uh, particular link where i am going to paste each and every line each and every line uh, whatever i am writing inside my jupyter notebook so today uh, we're going to start with a chroma db so for that guys what you can do so here first of all let me close everything and here is what here is my session which is going on so let me keep it somewhere and yes now it is perfect great so uh, first of all what you need to do here so first at the first place you need to launch your neuro lab so just click on this neuro lab guys so just click on this neuro lab and once you will click on this neuro lab so here you will find out this type of interface now there is two options the first option is start your lab and the second option is my lab so just click on this start your lab right if you have already created a lab if you have already uh, created your uh, jupyter instance so that definitely you can uh, go inside my lab and you can launch the same jupyter instance and there you can write it down your code after creating the ipbind file that is also fine but i am showing you from starting so here guys what you need to do you need to click on this start your lab so once you will click on that so it will ask you about the sign in and all so here you can sign in guys you can pass your email id and it is completely free no need to uh, like uh, pay anything for this uh, neuro lab as of now so here you can see we have a different different stack so big data analytics data science programming and web development so what you can do here you can click on this data science so once you will click on that so here you will get all the option whatever is required for developing a project in this data science if you are going to develop a project uh, inside the data science so here you will find out all the id all the id we have given you in the form of template you just need to click on that and you can launch your instance so now let me show you with this jupyter so in today's session we're going to use the jupyter and in the next session we're going to use this conda conda for end-to-end -end development and jupyter just for the ipbnb implementation right now here what i'm going to do so here i'm going to open my jupyter so it will ask you the name so here i can write down the name chroma db so today in today's class we're going to talk about the chroma db which is nothing which is a database vector database and here what i will do i will proceed it and then it will be launching the lab so guys please do it please uh, do along with me because today I'm, I'm i will be going very very slow and each and every line of code i will be pasting inside the code share.io so that you can copy from there how many of you you are doing along with me please uh write it on the chat i'm waiting for a reply Sir, I have a interview for the generative AI position. Can you give me some tips and project. So, if you are asking about the tips, if you have a generative AI, uh, like if you have an interview related to the generative AI, so first of all, your foundation should be strong, and there you need to discuss about the project, right? So the the pro whatever uh, like practical implementation I have discussed throughout this community series. You can go through with that and you can prepare that so the question you will get around to that only so there will they will ask you uh are you using this api why you are why you are using it what is the cost of that can you productionize it what all alternatives we have so what is the uh, concept of the vector database why we cannot use other database what is the concept of the reg how we can fine-tune the model what is the cost what will be the cost of the fine-tuning of, fine of the model can be uh, like uh, can we uh, uh, like keep in uh, keep it in a scalable, uh, scalable mode or not right so uh, can we do a uh, like a uh, like a cpu based fine tuning right uh, there is a uh, like if the model is very very huge so in that case how uh, if the model is very very huge so in that case how i can load it so uh, in that case you need to say that i i can use the quantized model so this type of question you can assume inside the interview right so don't worry i will share one pdf there i will keep all the interview question related to the generative ai and it will be available on your dashboard got it don't worry got it ramesh Ramesh Anangi. Fine. Uh, I think it is taking time. So let me refresh it. 
and then again i will launch just a second guys i have refreshed it now let's see <laughs> Oh, why it is taking too much time? Yeah, now it's done. So let me launch then this uh, IPI kernel. Let's, let me launch this IPython notebook. So please uh, give me a quick confirmation if you are able to see this. Tell me guys. So here I can print uh, all okay yeah so guys all okay no we are not going to do a fine tuning in a comedy session so we'll restrict this comedy session till uh, the project itself till the end-to-end -end project where we are going to call the api that's it uh, deep end. so tell me guys all okay yes or no and i think everything is visible to all of you right so can we start and first of all, let me save this notebook. So here I can write it down this chroma DV. So my <coughs> notebook name is what? My notebook name is a chroma DB. So let's start. Uh, let's start with the chroma DB. So first of all, guys, uh, let me give you the brief introduction about the chroma DB. That what is a chroma DB and why we are using it. So let's uh, search uh, together. And here let's search about the chroma DB. So once I will search uh, here the Chroma DB. So here you will find out the very first website of the Chroma DB. Just click on that and let me open it first of all. So here is what here is a Chroma DB guys. Now they have given you the different different option, right? So here you will find out a different different option uh, on top of this website. So the first one is a documentation. The second is a GitHub. The third one is a Discord community. The fourth one is a blog. And here they have written that we are hiring and here launching multi-model. So they have announced multi-model also. Now from here you can start here. You can find out the demo as well. So you can uh, uh, like check with the demo. And here you will find out the, the complete architecture which they have given to you. And uh, like what you are going to do here. Tell me you are going to convert your queries into a vector. And that vector basically you are going to save it. Right. That vector that particular vector you are going to save it now here uh, let's try to discuss about the uh, difference between this chroma db and the pine code but first of all let me go through with the documentation so here is a, a demo demo of the chroma db which you will find out over here inside the collab notebook which they have provided you over the website itself now if you want to look into the source code so here they have given the source code as well this is the github just click on that and here you will find out the complete source code of the chroma db so the uh, this chroma db is a open source database and here you can see the number of contributor how many contributors there 86 contributors there uh, like 10.7 uh, K people has uh, already used this particular um, database now here you will find out the 992 commits and uh, if you will look into the package if you look into the pipe package so let's see the first version and the last version the latest version of the chroma DB so here you can write it down this uh, chroma db chroma uh, db on uh, top of the google now here you will find out the webs this uh pi by page so this is the latest version of the chroma db 0 0.4 or 0.20 right now if you will look into the previous version if you want to check with that so just click on that just click on this release history you will find out the entire history of this chroma version so how frequently they are updating the thing uh, so they haven't completed even one year right and here you will find out that uh, these many of version uh, like you will find out you will get it related to this chroma db because it is an open source now here you will find out so many contributor inside this chroma db you can check with the contributor list you can check with the contributor name here and here you can see the entire community so guys uh, this is the contributor now used by 10.7 k people and here you will find out the fork number of fork 
and the star so just go through with this particular github there you will find out the entire detail related to the chroma db where you will get it so you will get this thing over the uh, website itself so here uh, on top of the website you will find out a different different options so they have you there you will find out the github and even you can join the community of this chroma db so they have given you the option of the discord so just click on that and you can join their community on discord so whatever doubts and all you have so you can ask it over the discord now coming to the documentation so here here is a documentation of the chroma db so just look into the documentation here you will find out each and everything whatever is required for understanding this chroma db so let's start with the getting it started now here they have given you the two options the first one is going to be a python this one and the second option is going to be java script right so the first option is a python the second option is a java script now uh, here you will find out the installation detail how to install this thing now here you will find out how to create a client from the chroma db so if you want to create a client of the chroma db so here is an option for creating a client for the of the chroma db now here uh, how to create a collections and all so this is the collection and here how to add it now how to query the collection each and everything you will find out over here so guys once you will install this particular package you will get everything over here this is not a cloud based database it's a uh, like a local database there if you will download this thing so everything you will get inside the local itself so that is the first major difference between the pinecone and the chroma db so chroma db actually it's not a cloud based database and here actually see it's not a cloud based here everything you will do inside the local itself right so here you will do everything inside the local itself in your local workspace but if you are talking about the pinecone so it's a cloud based database so in that you have seen you must have seen let me show you the pinecone website as well so here if i'm writing down this a pinecone so you will find out here over the pinecone that it's a vector database for the vector search now just scroll down here so here you will find out a different different cloud operate cloud uh, operator so it is fully managed by google gcp aws and azure anywhere you can create an instance and then you can utilize it after installing this inside your local system so everything will be available over the cloud after configuring this pinecone so that is the first major difference between the pinecone and this chroma db now coming to the point so here uh, if we are talking about the chroma db so let's try to check with the google itself what is the difference between chroma db and the pinecone so uh, everything is available with the google so here actually i found out uh, find out one uh, article so let's try to look into this particular article and by uh, like reading this articles and all you can understand because this is the recent thing recent uh, research okay it's not like that that people are working on this on top of this since last uh, uh, like uh, 10 year or 15 year so you will find out that there is a recent active community so whatever you will find out you will find out on top of the reddit on top of the stack overflow github or uh, you will get a knowledge from the documentation or from a different different blog so just try to read this particular blog and let's try to understand the difference between pinecone and chroma db now what is the pros and cons so with that you will get uh, some sort of idea that if you are going to decide about a database whatever database is there right so whatever database is there whatever vector database is there so on which a point right on which topic you need to select the database what all thing you need to consider over there that is a main point so let's try to discuss let's try to see over here so we are talking about the pinecone guys so pinecone is a managed vector database designed to handle real time search and similarity matching at scale right so here they have clearly mentioned that this uh, pinecone database it uh, designed to handle the real time search and similarity matching at a scale which we have seen in my previous class which we i have shown you in my previous uh, like a lecture itself you can go and check it's bold on a state of art technology and has gained popularity of its use cases of performance right so here uh, it is easy to use and it is uh, performing well because of that it's gained the popularity now let's delve into the key attribute advantage and the limitation of the pine cone so here just look into the pros and here they are saying that it is for the real time search it is for the scalability definitely we are going to use the uh, 
cluster on top of the cloud so they definitely we can do a horizontal scaling over there right so this is the scalable one so architecture has been designed in such a way the installation and all the computation and the dbm database management is happening in such a way that it is a scalable and it's not a vertical scale right it we can do a horizontal scaling regarding this pine cone now this is for the real time search here you will get the automatic indexing so yesterday itself we have created one index and there you will find out along with the vector you will find out that we were having one index column there we are having the scoring and also automatically indexing right you no need to write it down anything automatically you will get the indexing now here python support so this is the very important thing if you are going to develop any application in data science in machine learning and deep learning we are heavily we are using python so yes definitely it is supporting a python as well got it now what is the cons of it so cons wise here you will find out the first one is a cost right so cost is a like major uh, disadvantage of this pine cone so we cannot use this pine cone freely so here if you will look into the pricing of this pine cone so there you will find out the different different pricing so if you are a starter if you are a beginner the definitely you can go with a free tire but let's say if you are not a starter if you're not a beginner you want to use it for some sort of an application right where you are going to implement some POCs and all where you want to uh, implement some real-time use cases for your organization for your project so you can take this particular pack where a standard is there now here you will find out uh, these many things you can check according to your requirement and let's say if you want to personalize something right so let's say if you are working in a company and there you want to personalize something and here uh, so you what you can do you can take this enterprise solution so there you will find out many more things you can check with the pricing detail you can talk with the pine cone team right consulting team they will guide you regarding each and everything so the first thing the first disadvantage you can see over here here, there is a cost itself the second disadvantage you will find out limited query functionality so while pine code excel is similar to search it might lack some advanced query capability that certain project required maybe the mathematical model they are using the different different mathematical mathematical model they are using behind that like like uh, cosine similarity dot product so it is not uh, working in that much effective way which people has uh, felt right even i haven't checked with this particular uh, cons right i haven't uh, checked that this is uh, having a limited query function functionality because i uh, just check with a certain use cases so guys if you are getting this particular cons so definitely before starting with a pycon before productionize it right or before uh, like uh, using inside your uh, like project definitely you should consider to this particular point where you have a limited query functionality right now how to use pinecone so i think i already told you how to use pinecone i'm not going into that much detail now let's talk about the chroma db so chroma db is similar to pinecone just, just try to focus now just for two minutes next for two minutes and then i will go with the practical implementation right so if you are talking about the chroma db so it is similar to the pinecone and designed to handle vector storage and retrieval means we can store the data and we can retrieve the data right so it offers a robust set of feature that creator that cater various use cases making a variable choice for many vector application right so here uh, clearly we are getting that that we we can use this chroma db for storing the vectors right we can store the vector and we can retrieve the vector right now here you will find out a different different pros and cons so the first pros is there that is what there is a uh, open source right so open this chroma db is a open source vector database here i have shown you the code of this chroma db right you can you can like uh, check uh, with this particular code now here you can press the uh, dot so this entire code will be available inside the vs code now you can go through with this particular code and you can check that what all files and folder they have created and what all thing they have written inside this a uh, particular project right so you can consider this nothing this is a project only now here you will find out a different different files and folder and now they are maintaining this thing in the form of package also so on top of the pipe pi repository you will find out this chroma db in the form of package so from there you can install it by using the pip install command right now just look into this chroma db that what they have written so here they have written of uh, they have created a various folder so the first one is the api now here you will find out a different different api let's try to create click on this 
fast api just read the code from here and here you can see the auth cli so this is a real time project right which they have deployed in a real time and which they are using right which everyone is using and here you will find out the number of force number of star number of contributor each and everything you can see so there is a first uh, advantage of this uh, chroma db that is a open source now extensible query chroma db allows more friction for flexibility querying capability including complex range search and combination of vector attribute so here you can think that or here you can assume that uh, this chroma db is working well right compared to the pine cone where i have to do a similar search right so here they have clearly mentioned inside this particular blog based on their own experience that this chroma db is working well for the similarity search if you want to find out some sort of a combinations and all in that case it is going to work very very well now community support is very very high as i told you that it's an open source right so here you will find out the complete community just go back and check with the github itself so here is our 83 contributors 86 contributors and if you will look into the website if you will look into the website so there you will find out the discord github slack everything uh, they have provided to you uh, for uh, connecting with the community so if you want to connect with the community so there they have given you the different different ways right so this community the community of the chroma db is a very very strong now let's look into the cons so here i told you that this chroma db uh, set this chroma db is not for the deployment deployment complexity is there because you won't be able to find out this chroma db on top of the uh, cloud right so they uh, the pine cone basically already it is running on top of the cloud there you just need to consume it by using the api right there you need to use this chroma db there you need to use the pine cone by using the api but it is not same with chroma db actually this chroma db whenever you are going to use it it is not available in the form of api because it's a open source package you need to install it inside your local workspace and you need to use it right you need to install it inside your local workspace and you need to use it so if you are going to deploy it right if you are going to deploy it so there you will find out a complexity so here just read uh, the complexity point setting up chroma db chroma and managing it scale might require more effort and expertise compared to many solution like pine code because in the pine code you're just consuming the api right you're just consuming the api everything is there on top of the uh, third party server everything is running over there you just need to consume it by using the api but here in the chroma db the thing is not same deployment complexity definitely will find out because there is a no like cloud support as of now for the chroma db you will have to install inside your local workspace and you will have to set up each and everything got it now performance consideration yes uh definitely this thing also will come into the picture if we are talking about regarding the real time use cases so performance is also might be here and there so there are some points you can uh search about more um, regarding a different different data uh, like regarding a different different uh, vector database and from there you can uh like pick out you can pick up this particular points this particular heading and you can do your own research so whether it's a scalable whether it's a whether there is an indexing for the fast retrieval whether there is a python support or it is fine for the deployment so you can pick up this point and based on that you can make a differences and based on that you can understand actually right so i hope guys you are getting it now uh, the differences is clear so please uh, do let me know in the chat if uh, the differences is clear to all of you then we'll uh, go for the coding yes or no <coughs> yeah thank you satish so satish saying sunny sir i have enrolled for the generative ai 10 percent discount got the python free recording with that that's a big surprise great great uh, satish congratulations so yeah now uh, i hope this part is clear to all of you now let's start with the practical implementation of this chroma db so here are uh, for uh, implementation actually first of all we'll have to install some library so whatever code whatever code i'm pasting over here in my jupyter notebook the same code i will provide you in my code share.io also so here is my code guys which i'm going to run now the same code i am pasting in my code share.io so that you can copy from there so did you get a link of this code share.io please uh, do let me know in the chat please do confirm guys if you got the link of this code share.io so don't worry my team will give it to you inside the chat and from there you can copy the entire code 
how to fine tune the question answer data using llama 2 model and i don't have context but i have only uh, question answer and i have so that is that the question, the fine tuning also we can do that but for that we required a huge amount of resources and based on a model also like which model you are going to use so as of now i'm not going giving you the detail regarding the fine tuning and all i understand that's going to be an important topic but yeah so here i'm talking about the vector database and then we'll start with one more project and after that maybe we'll take few more classes we'll try to discuss about the concept of the fine tuning right but as of now you can think that uh like if you have your own question answering data right so there might be a different different technique right different different technique for the fine tuning the recent technique which i was searching the recent technique name was the parametric effective fine tuning so what's the meaning of that parametric effective fine tuning so there you have the question answer there you have your data now based on that you have to train the model which will be required a huge amount of resources and you can do over the uh, like cpu also on uh, like on a low cost also but for that you will be required a quantized model so that is a different thing how you can quantize your model and then how you can do a fine tuning there are some uh, more techniques comes into the picture like lora and q lora that is also a technique a different different technique regarding this uh, parametric effective fine tuning so we'll try to discuss it right and for that only we have designed the course just just look into that each and everything we have mentioned over there where we are going to discuss everything in a very very detailed way got it now here uh, i have given you this particular link and here is a installation statement pip install chroma db open ai langchain and tick token you need to install this for library now here guys uh let me install this library inside my inside my environment just a second are you doing it can i get a quick yes or no in the chat if you are doing along with me and please hit the like button guys please hit the like button if you're liking the session because i can see uh, you have joined the session but uh, you're not writing anything inside the chat and you're, you're just watching don't don't do like this hit the like button guys and if you have any sort of a doubt just just uh, write it on the chat just cheer up okay so let's make it more interactive got it Mm, yeah it is installing now let me give you a few more libraries so just a second i can give you a few more library which i kept somewhere mm, okay that is fine now after that you can check with this particular command so here is a command guys this one so let me give you this particular command pip show chroma db just uh check with this command that your chroma db successfully installed or not here is a command the command is pip show chroma db yeah it is perfect now it is done so have you installed it have you installed uh, this all the library Tell me guys fast, then I will proceed further. Now you can check with the Chroma DB, then you will find out the detail of the Chroma DB. So it is giving you that it will give you the detail of the Chroma DB. There is a simple command pip show Chroma DB. So we have installed the Chroma DB on the uh, workspace in the latest workspace. And here you will find out the detail of the Chroma DB. This is the latest model. This is the latest model. Vishnu, I have already shared the code. Please go and check. With the code share.io okay join the session on time because again and again i won't repeat a same thing so please be aware be active i'm sharing everything that's why there is a like code share.io which i have shared with all of you okay just copy from there and paste it inside the jupyter notebook yes we have a generative AI related project just check in a community session also we have completed a project and even in the course also we have a project so ramesh please check with the course please check with the dashboard <coughs> now i think uh, till here everything is fine everything is done see the first thing what i need to do so here actually i need to i need to uh 
like uh, I need to get I need to download a data so from here from this particular link I am going to collect a data right let me show you uh, what we have on top of this particular uh, on over here actually at this particular link so for that just copy it and paste it inside your Google so just just paste it over here open the Google and paste it in your Google now just a second yeah so here is a Dropbox guys so in the Dropbox actually you will find out this particular data right so just a second uh, let me show you this data mm -hmm. specifically we have this data just a second guys so here in the url box i can paste it mm -hmm. yeah so here is a data guys so the data actually it's a news article so just see the article uh, it's a news article. So AI powered supply chain startup Pendo lends 30 million investment TXT. Just open it and read it, right? This our data is already uh, available somewhere in a Dropbox. So I just shown you this particular link and we are going to like use this data for creating a embeddings and for uh, like, uh, and then we'll, uh, then we'll store the embedding inside the, then we'll store the embedding inside the vector database. So this is the data basically which we are going to use. Here we have a several text files. So just go through with the data. There you will find out the entire detail related to the data. Uh, so here is a one more article, replace TB writers strike.txt. So just go and check with this particular article. Now here is one more article. Just go and check with that particular article. So this is the article, everything you need to know about the AI powered chatbot, right? So different, different article you will find out over here. Check the AI powered data protection project, right? So there are so many article which we are going to use, which we are going to use for our, uh, like this, this is the article which we are going to use for our embeddings and all. By using this data, by using this text data, by using this particular data, text data, what we are going to do, we are going to, first we are going to convert a chunks, right? And then we are going to convert those chunks into an embedding by using the embedding model. I will show you which embedding model we're gonna use. So we are going to use the OpenAI model, but there are so many embedding model. You can use the uh, button bag. There are so many models you will find out over the hugging face also. So it's up to you. You can do a Google search. I will show you how to do that. And then you can select your model as per your requirement, right? Now here, this is the data. Now let me give you the data link over here by running this particular command. So this is the data link and by running uh, this a particular command, here is a command guys, where is a command? This is the command. So by using this a particular command, you can install the data or you can load the data or you can download the data into your local workspace. So let's see, let uh, me show you the data basically. So here you just need to run this command. So just press shift plus enter and see left hand side your data is getting installed. And yes, it is done. Now here is a GIF file. See guys, there is a GIF file, news article GIF file, left hand side in a left hand uh, in the workspace, basically, you will, you will find out this news article dot zip. But if you want to unzip this data, so for that also we have a command. Now let me give you that a particular command. So the command is what? Command is nothing. Unzip hyphen q news article. You need to be uh, like unload it. Uh, you need to be like uh, unload it, right? You need to be unzip it. Uh, and here you will get this data inside this particular folder. Now let me show you, let me run it. And here you can see we have our data inside this particular folder. So I'm giving you this command. I'm giving you this particular command. Just a second, you can check and you can run inside your system. So here is the data guys. Here you will find out the data. Now let me annotate it. Uh, this particular thing this is the data data is about the news article so news article data and here you will find out the command which you can run and with that you can install you can install this zip file install the zip file in your local workspace where you need to install guys tell me you need to install this a uh, work file you need to install this zip file inside your local workspace so let me write it down here local workspace and with this particular command you can unzip it so by using this particular command you can unzip it so each and everything i have written over here you just need to copy and paste inside your jupyter notebook that's it right great so please uh, use the if see someone is saying ravi is saying sir wget is not working 
सो हियर डब्ल्यू गेट इज वर्किंग ना दिस यूज दिस विद एस्केलेशन मार्क राइट एंड यूज द न्यूरो लैब आई हैवन शोन यू दिस थिंग बाई यूज द को लैब और मे बी विद लोकल सेटअप आई मीन सी इन लिनेक्स इन्वायरमेंट डेफिनेटली इट विल वर्क बट इफ यू आर यूजिंग द विंडो सिस्टम सो इन द इन दैट केस इट माइट नॉट वर्क सो यूज द लिनेक्स इन्वायरमेंट एंड दिस lab actually has been configured on top of the linux environment in a production you will find out the linux environment only because for that you no need to pay anything it's a open source right so just like required a small amount of uh, the linux server but yeah if you are like using a windows server in a production so definitely it's going to charge you very very much so here is a linux environment which i'm uh, like uh, where i'm executing all this command so wget is there anjip is there now let me run the next command so here the next command is what uh, what so here i need to set my open ai api so i got the data here you will find out basically i got the data this is what this is what this is my data which i got in my local workspace now after that i am going to set my i'm going to set my open ai api key you know it how to set the open ai api key many time i have shown you in my lecture so for that you just need to go through with the open ai website open the open ai website and here search uh, just click on that the and then click on the login you will find out two option the first option is the api and the second is the chat gpt so just click on the api and then click on the api key so here you will find out the api key so this is the api key basically which i have generated and here i have passed it inside my notebook also so just if you will see into this api key so here i passed this api key into my notebook this is what this is my api key right now what i can do guys see uh just a second let me pass the correct one mm, because i am using the old api key over here just a second just allow me a minute okay i kept it somewhere i kept it uh and you have to generate your open ai api key i am not giving you that uh because for that i have paid actually so please use your api key uh there are so many person which join the session so if they are going to use my open ai key definitely it will be rushed out so please use uh, your open ai key please generate it by yourself initially it will give you the 20 dollar credit so you can use it now here uh, there is what there is my open ai api key now it is done tell me guys still here everything is fine everything is clear to all of you please uh, do let me know in the chat if everything is going well so far so i'm waiting for a reply and i'm giving you this particular command there you can paste your open ai key and you can run it so this is for the open ai key tell me guys fast waiting for a reply if you are done till here then please do let me know then only i will proceed sir i am not for the pesco can i start my iron team yes satish you can ask your doubt uh, to the iron team they will uh, assist you regarding your all the doubts all the concerns <clears throat> so please give me a quick confirmation guys if uh, you are done if you are able to follow me till here then i will proceed further tell me guys fast waiting for your reply please or uh, do let me know and please hit the like button guys ah uh, if you are liking this session and yeah you can write down the chat or chat also uh, whatever doubt you have while you are implementing it and don't worry today the understanding will be more clear regarding this database regarding this vector database compared to the previous session because today uh because already we have learned it na right so today is a kind of revision so don't worry we have uh created one project also and after the after this pro after this uh, like implementation i will show you the project architecture also so uh, in the next class we are going to discuss about that particular project we are going to implement from scratch and there you will get to know that how this vector database is being used right so we are going to create one chatbot and the chatbot is going to be a medical chatbot we are specifically going to train on top of the medical data right so just stay tuned with us uh, in next class i uh, will create one more project and we'll try to use it the we'll try to use the flask over there and fast api and we'll deploy it also right got it great now here after that i have uh, imported few libraries now let me give you this libraries inside the uh, like codeshare.io 
so there uh, what i can do guys here i can uh, write it down you need to import this a uh, particular library so here i have written you need to import this a uh, libraries libraries so just just uh, copy it guys and after copying it you can uh, uh, run inside your system so see guys if i am running it then definitely uh, where is my node <laughs> yeah this one so here you can see after running it uh, after basically importing it what i need to do i just need to run it so see i am able to import each and everything now let's try to understand each and every detail about this uh, libraries about this import statement so for that uh, just a second i can open my epic pen and that uh, there i can uh, explain you each and everything Sir, can I explain the you know, experience certificate with a paid course? Yes, definitely. It is a certificate and experience certificate will be available, right? So, uh, actually, you can generate it. Uh, I, I given you the walkthrough in my previous session. Just, just check and uh, check with those particular uh, like session. Just go through with the introduction itself. Uh, so, there I have discussed about the internship portal as well. If you don't know, don't worry. Again, I will uh, open that and I give you, I will give you the walkthrough. So how you can complete the internship on top of this generative AI because we are going to add more and more projects related to the generative AI with a different different uh, like domain. So you can complete your project in a multiple domains, right? So don't worry, uh, uh, like I will show you that. It's still it is in a pipeline, uh, the project will be uploaded. Maybe not today, in the next class, definitely we'll be talking about it, right? So let's try to discuss about this library so here is the library the first one is a length chain dot vector store and here is a chroma right so chroma it is this for the chroma db this for this what this for the chroma db now here this is for the open AI embedding and as i told you right so uh we can generate an embedding right we can generate the word embedding and this word embedding is nothing this word embedding is nothing it's a vector only so what is this tell me this word embedding is nothing it's a vector it's a vector right so here actually this open ai already uh, trained uh, so they already took the data and they already trained one model and by using this particular model they have generated a embedding now how to do that so how to do that tell me guys so here regarding this particular data regarding this particular data definitely they must be having the uh, like vocabulary they have generated one vocabulary and for this particular vocabulary they must have created the features right so features and they are passing each and everything to their model and this model is nothing that's going to be a neural network right there's going to be a neural network and yes based on that they will they are going to generate the embedding right so i told you that how to generate an embedding and all if you will go and check with my previous session there i have discussed about this embedding open ai embedding now here we have one more package open ai this is for the this for calling this open ai api so by using this one we can call the open ai api directory loader we can load the directory text loader we can load the text and all whatever uh like files we have now we have enough text format so by using this uh, text loader we can load that particular data that particular file so let's try to uh, load it now so for that also we have a code for uh, loading a data and here is a simple code let me copy and paste it over here and along uh, with that let me copy and paste inside your uh inside the inside the code share.io also so please copy from here each and everything i'm giving you uh, so you just need to copy it and you need to paste it inside your system so here what i can do guys here uh, i can write it down for loading the data and guys believe me after completing uh, this much of thing the understanding will be more clear to all of you so for loading the data let me write it down over here and uh, just copy from here and paste it inside your system now what i can do here i can load and inside this news article so globe is for what globe is for all the text files so whatever text file is there so it's going to read the data from the entire text file right so it is going to read the data from the entire text file for that you just need to mention one parameter the parameter is going to be globe right dot means current directory slash a star means what so here we have written the star so what is the meaning of the star so star is nothing a star is representing the entire directory right so whatever file name is going to start from this dot txt we are going to load the entire file we are going to load all those files that's it that's the meaning of the simple code now if i'm going to run it you will find out that we are able to create a loader over here i just need to call one method now i just need to call one method and the method is going to be dot load so let me run it and you will find out that it is giving me a syntax error 
now let me show you that yes we are able to load the data so it is saying that the file is not there okay let me remove it and here is this home joy on news article is not there why it is so oh just the wait let me copy the path to shareable link and should it be tree work news article so is this a path just to wait just to wait guys just to wait let me check once oh lab directory okay why it is giving me this issue copy the path and paste it over here that's it Are you facing the same issue? My open is expired. You can generate a next one, na? You can generate a next op, uh, API key. Oh, uh, it is giving me an issue, guys. Just a second. Let me delete it and let's see whether whether I will get up. So this is the directory actually. See home Jomian. Just copy this directory and just copy this complete directory and dismiss it and keep it over here. Now let me check. Yeah, now I am able to do it. So guys, here see once you will uh, do the right click and just click on the delete. Just click on the delete so it will give you the complete uh, directory. I don't know why I was not getting by using this copy path, but yeah, now I am getting it. So are you do it? Are you able to do it? Are you able to load the data? Are you able to load the document? Please do let me know. Yes or no so here is what here is my uh document please uh, give me a quick confirmation guys if you are able to load the document so just wait let me give you this line also this uh loader dot load and please try to load the data by using this a uh, loader dot load tell me guys if you are able to load the data then please write it down the chat i am waiting for your reply <coughs> tell me fast Are you enjoying the session? Do you like the session, guys? Tell me. Do you like the session so far? Or all your all the doubts and all is getting clear? Yes or no? Tell me. Oh, great so i think till here everything is fine everything is clear now we got our data right so we got our data now what i will do here so just a second let me show you so first of all we have a data now guys tell me after getting a data what i will do a any guess any any guess anything Just stop it, guys. Just wait. Yeah. So after getting the data, what I will do? So after getting a data, I will create a chunk, right? So let me copy and paste this particular code over here. What I can do? Just a second. This data is very very huge. So actually, it is taking time. If I am scrolling down, just a second. Yeah, now it's perfect. So here, actually, you will find out a data related to all the text file, right? So you got a data related to all the text file. 
Now here you need to create a chunk. So for that basically I'm going to use this a particular library and here we have few more code, right? Few more code, few more thing. Uh, so let me give you this particular code and then I will explain you the meaning of it because yesterday also like many people were asking to me sir what is the meaning of this particular code why we are using it uh like what we are doing over here what is the meaning of this uh text splitter a split document and all each and everything we're gonna discuss over here now uh, let me open my scribble link right and here we're gonna discuss about each and everything so what i can do let me zoom in first of all and now it is perfect so let's try to understand so guys at the first place what i did just tell me guys so at the first plate at the first place we have uh we have generated a data right so here actually we have a data so we got a data from somewhere this is what this is my data right after getting a data after getting a data what i what i'm doing right guys tell me so after getting a data i need to convert this particular data into an embedding right so what i need to do i need to convert this particular data into embedding now here i got a data and i am going to convert this data into embedding can you tell me which model we are using for this embedding can anyone tell me which model we are using for this embedding anyone fast which model so we are using open ai embedding model open ai open ai embedding embedding model right we are going to use open ai embedding model now guys here we are talking about this open AI embedding model so just just look into that just just open the model here what i can do uh let me show you the open ai models here i am searching about the open ai models right so we will get all the models over the op whatever model is there over the open ai platform so these are the model guys these are all the model which you can see here right so gpt4 is there gpt3.5 is there delhi tts whisper embedding is there so just just click on this uh, embedding right so just click on this embedding and here you will find out the embeddings and all right so uh text generator uh text uh moderation latest model max token you can pass thirty thousand, right thirty two thousand. now here is a gpt based model so web page based model so there is uh like you can pass 60 uh, 16 000 token there uh is a da vinci model there you can pass 16 000, 384 token now there is gpt3 based model so there you can pass 2000 token right this this is the token now actually in our case we are going to use the gpt based model this this gpt based model so we are going to use gpt 3.5 turbo right so here which model we are going to use we are going to use gpt 3.5 turbo right so here gpt gpt 3.5 basically we are using so now just just look into this in a gpt 3.5 uh this this model by default actually we are going to use this particular model now tell me guys what is the total limit here what is the total limit the total limit is 4960 right and here if you look into your data so this is your this is what this is your data just, now just look into this particular data now here are uh, guys there are so many tokens there are so many words if you will calculate the word so definitely it is going to exceed four a thousand right so definitely it is going to execute 4000 ex exit 4000 now let's say let, let's talk about that if you are working in a real time so you will get a very huge amount of data you are you will be getting a very huge amount of data and here if the sentence is going to be a very long in that case there might be a chance that my a model will not be able to sustain the context right my model will not be able to sustain the context and here you can see the there is a there's a like too long text right and here by default which model we are going to use we are going to use this gpt 3.5 turbo this this particular model uh basically whenever we are going to use the llm right we are going to use this particular model which is going to be a gpt 3.5 turbo and here you can see the tokens limit 4096 tokens right 4096 tokens now here the data which we have inside that uh, we have a lot many tokens right so we have a tokens which might exceed more than 4000 or let's say this is not going to exceed more than 4000 but let's say if you are working on some real time data and there there you are getting a data which is very very huge and which is exceeding the number of tokens right whatever model you are using let's say you are using a topmost model where you can give 30000 token but still it is exceeding the limit in that case what you will do so you will provide your data in terms of chunks what you will do tell me you will provide your data in terms of in the form of chunks right so that is what we are going to do over here so over here guys what i'm going to do see uh 
here is what let's say here is my data right and here is what here is my embedding i want to perform the embedding now what i will do here i will i will keep one thing so in between this data and this embedding right so actually after that after this embedding and all what i will do tell me i will pass to my model now i will pass this thing to my model right so i cannot deny with this thing so i am going to pass this thing to the model and here we have a data right we have a data and in between actually what we are going to do we are going to do a chunking right what we are going to do we are going to do a chunking now let's try to understand what is the meaning of the chunking so let's say we have a data right so what what i have guys tell me let's say we have a data now what i have to do i have to do a chunking right i have to convert this data into a chunks now here in the library which i have imported there you will find out two thing two words so let me do one thing let me copy and paste this thing from here so here what i can do uh, what is happening okay where is this oh just a second guys just a wait mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah here is a code guys see so what i'm going to do from here i'm going to take uh i'm going to copy this particular line this this particular line right now let me copy it and let me paste it over here so here is what here is my this paper link so here i'm going to paste this a particular line and now guys here actually you'll find out two things the first is a chunk size and the second one is what overlap right so what i'm going to do so here i'm going to copy and paste some data from here itself right just just focus everything will be clear over here so here is what here is my data now let me copy this a particular data this, this is my data this one page content now i'm going to copy this particular data and i copied let's say till here right this is just for the demo this, this is just for the demo nothing else right so here is what guys here is my data which i kept over here right now just just look into this data so here's my data which i just uh, took for the demo so the first thing which i have defined that's going to be a chunk size right chunk size now what is the meaning of that so here actually let's say uh i'm going to divide my data into chunks what i'm going to do tell me i'm going to divide my data into chunks so i want that i want 100 tokens over there here i, here I have written 1000 right let's say i am giving 100 tokens so what is the meaning of that means so let's say there is first chunk one chunk in that until i am not going to complete 100 tokens let's say from here to here from here to here we got 100 tokens right so i will stop over here and that data so that is what there is my first chunk now again there will be a second chunk so it's going to start from here and let's say till here so here i'm going to complete my 100 tokens so this is going to my third chunk now there is a third uh, third chunk basically so in the third chunk you'll find out we are going to start from here and let's say till here so this is going to be my third chunk where i'm able to complete my 100 tokens and what is the meaning of the tokens so token is nothing it's going to be a word so what is the meaning of the tokens so tokens is nothing the word itself is called a token right so if you are going to complete 100 words in in that case i am able to generate my first chunk i am going to generate my first chunk and why i am doing that because let's say if data is very very huge so i cannot directly pass that particular data to my model it will exceed the limit so the better thing is what i am going to provide my data in terms of chunks in terms of small small chunks right so it will be able to sustain the context also and my limit is not going to exceed got it now here you have a uh, three chunks regarding this particular data so let's understand the meaning of this chunk overlap right so let's say instead of this uh 200 i'm just writing 20 right so now guys let's say uh my first chunk is going to start from here to here right to here now second chunk is going to start from the from this if from here to here right here now let's say uh, i'm writing 20 so what will happen you know what will happen so it will take 20 words this this second this second chunk this second chunk it will take it will take 20 words it will take 20 words from the previous sentence so let's say this is the 20 words this this is the 20 words now this 20 words will be carry forward to my 
second chunk now here we are talking about the third one third one so here let's say from here to here from here to here this is my third chunk now if i'm writing chunk overlap is 20 so from the previous sentence from the previous chunk my 20 words is getting overlap means it is going to forward is it is carrying forward to my next chunk getting my point what is the meaning of this chunk size and why we are doing that what is the meaning of the chunk size chunk overlap what is the meaning of chunk i hope everything is getting clear now i have given you the clear cut explanation so let's try to do a chunking regarding my data so over here if you will find out let me show you the chunks and all and how we can do that actually <coughs> What is the purpose of the overlapping? Just, just think about it. Just think about it. What is the purpose of the overlapping? So we want to sustain the information from the previous sentence, from the previous chunk. That's it. Right? That's it. Now my data is little smaller. In that case, uh, I'm not able to create so many chunks. What I will do? I will perform the overlapping. Getting my point. Right? Yeah. To maintain the context, to maintain the length whatsoever. Now here I'm passing my document. I'm passing my document. And here I'm going to create a chunk. So guys over here you will find out inside of this a particular variable there is my chunk. So here if I want to extract the first chunk so this is what this is my first chunk. As you can see now I can call the page content. So here if I am going to call this a page a content so you will find out this is what this is my content right. Now here I can take the second chunk also. So here is what here is let's say is my second chunk. So you will find out this what this is my second chunk. Now here you will find out the third chunk. So this is is going to be our third chunk. Now let me show you the third chunk. So here actually you will find out all the chunk in the list. So I can get the length of the list also. So just uh, call this length and this text. So here you will find out total 233 chunks. Got it? Yes or no? Now let me give you this particular code. And here is what here. Uh, I have a code. Let me close it first of all. This is what this is my code. Uh, let me paste it over here. So just copy from here and try to extract, right? So try to extract. So here actually uh, you have a text, right? And from there you can extract the content. Now uh, trial uh, junction is saying, sir, Hindi me thoda explain kar dijiye. So for the Hindi, Hindi ke liye hamare paas alag se channel hai. जिस में हम सारा की सारा हिंदी में कंटेंट को रिपीट कर रहे हैं ठीक है रिपीट भी कर रहे हैं कुछ कुछ नया चीजें भी ऐड कर रहे हैं अगर आपको इंग्लिश समझने में परेशानी है खासकर मेरी इंग्लिश समझने में देन यू कैन विजिट दैट आई नीड ऑन टेक हिंदी चैनल देयर आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग एवरीथिंग इन इंग्लिश सॉरी इन हिंदी राइट सो दिस इज अ चैनल फॉर द इंग्लिश एंड दैट चैनल विल बी फॉर द हिंदी सो जस्ट गो एंड चेक देयर यू विल फाइंड आउट ऑल द कंटेंट इन हिंदी अदरवाइज जस्ट वेट फॉर वन मोर आवर फ्रॉम 6 पीएम ऑनवर्ड्स आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ सेम क्लास इन अ हिंदी आल्सो राइट ऑन आई नीड ऑन टेक हिंदी गॉट इट ग्रेट नाउ here you can see we are able to get a content from the page from the data now uh, this is the data which i got i am able to do a chunking now it's time to do a now it's time to do a tell me it's time to perform the embedding now let's try to do embedding and let's try to do a, a further thing over here so the next thing is going to be an embedding itself so just a second let me do the embedding uh, let me give you the code basically so here is a code for the chunky yeah so guys the next step is going to be a very very uh the next step is going to be a very very crucial just just focus on that and within a 15 minute we'll try to complete it so here my next step is what so here my next step is creating a db so let me remove it first of all and here i'm going to create my database so what i'm going to do guys i'm going to create my database so now for creating a db actually there is a is a like certain thing there is a certain code which i need to write it down over here so the first thing uh the first thing basically what i need to do i need to import the embedding so first of all let me give you this entire code and step by step one by one i will try to explain you so just a second i am going to paste the entire code in my code share dot io so 
here uh, you can paste it you can copy it from here from the code share.io i am giving you each and every of a uh, code each and every line so at least you can run along with me if you are running inside your system so you can run along with me here is the entire code guys from 41 to 48 just copy it and run inside your ipv file now let me show you that what all thing we are going to do over here so here is our embedding let me copy it from here let me paste it so this is going to my embedding and let's run it yes we are able to uh import it now the second thing is what i told you uh i told you initially that uh, we are not going to maintain any such information or we are not going to store any such information on cloud right we are not going to store any such information on cloud because here this chroma db is a local db right where you won't be able to find out any server on top of the cloud any cluster on top of the cloud everything will be happening in a local itself in our local workspace so process directory there i'm going to store my all the embedding here is a folder this is what this is the directory now let me run it and here is a directory now what i will do guys so here i'm going to create an embedding right so here i'm going to create an embedding just a wait so this is going to be my embedding open a embedding means uh it's what it's my class right uh, for generating embeddings uh, which i'm going to import from the open AI. yesterday also i shown you this thing now here this is the crucial step just, just focus over here guys just focus and don't worry i'm giving you the link again so just uh call, okay i'm giving you to my giving it to my team and they will paste it inside the chat so here you will get it uh, within fraction of second just wait so guys uh here i given this particular link inside the chat now you can check you can copy it and you can copy you can open it and you can copy the entire code from here itself so within a second you will get a link inside your chat now let's try to understand the further things till here everything is fine everything is clear everything is a perfect now here is what here we have a method uh here actually we have a like class chroma and inside that you will find out a method from a documents right now here we are passing three things the first thing is what the first thing is text the second thing is a embedding and the third thing is what the third thing is a directory right first thing is text the second thing is a embedding model and the third thing is a directory now as soon as i will run it let's see what i will be getting so it is running and it is creating an embedding it is generating an embedding and i will get that inside my db folder inside my database folder just wait and just look into this db folder guys so here actually uh it is running still it is running and now open this db so just just refresh it and here inside that you will find out the embedding now guys see <coughs> there is uh one cons there is one disadvantage of this chroma db so yesterday itself i shown you the pine con there you will able to see the there you were able to see the embedding and all on top of the screen but here whatever embedding you will get you will get in the form of binary file getting my point so here you will get all the embedding in the binary file in the bin file right here is the extension you can see dot bin getting my point yes or no so now let's try to decode this thing what i can do now let's try to decode this thing this particular thing where i got my embedding now everything is going to track by using this uh sql3 right so in backend it is using the sql3 and it's trying to store the embedding because it is required some sort of a server na chroma db is not a database right it's just like a it's just a uh, basically you can think it's just a wrapper kind of a wrapper basically so in backend it is using this sql3 server and it's storing the embedding no, but not uh, like we are not going to interact with this sql3 and all with sql and all right no it's not like that right we are storing this vector and in backend it is using a sql3 server got it now if you want to understand more about the chroma db you can read about it you can go and check with the documentation and all there you will find out a depth intuition regarding this chroma db now here i think this is clear this is fine now let's uh, do one thing let's try to understand few more thing over here after storing the data in the form of uh, embeddings inside this db folder now what i need to do next so here uh you can see so we have the uh directory so let me show you 
ओके जस्ट वेट वेक्टर डी वी टेटर एम डी ओके सो हियर गाइस यू कैन सी वी आर गोइंग टू कॉल दिस पर्टिकुलर मेथड वेक्टर डी वी डॉट पोसिस राइट हियर आई एम सेइंग दैट पोसिस द डी वी टू द डिस सो हियर आई कैन कॉल इट आई कैन कॉल दिस पर्टिकुलर मेथड विच इज देयर ऑन टॉप इनसाइड द वेक्टर डी वी सो हियर एक्चुअली यू विल फाइंड आउट यू दिस द ऑब्जेक्ट right so which you got which you are getting over here you can call this particular method persist now if i will run it so here you will be able to persist this thing inside your uh, local disk it itself right this one now here you can see so vector database is none we can assign this also now guys here one more thing which i would like to show you which i would like to run it over here that is what that is this uh, like chroma itself right so here we are saying now we can load the persist database from the disk and use it as a normal one so what i can do here so here i call this persist now i'm going to assign this none now what i'm going to do here see uh, i'm going to use this persist directory means in whatever directory you want to keep the database so there is a db itself this one db and here i am calling embedding function is equal to embedding right so here itself uh, like here my embedding function will be this embedding and here is my persist directory right now what i have written over here see now we can load the persist database from the disk and use it in a normal fashion right over here we can uh, do that so let me run it and here you will find out so this is what so here actually you will find out the database so inside this itself uh, okay it is getting updated just a second now let me yes yeah, so read me new article yeah so here basically in this particular vector db you will find out a database now now see guys what we are going to do so we have created a chunks right now we have we have created a chunks after that this what this is my embeddings which we are going to import from the langchain itself now here is my directory vb itself now here you will find out the open ai embedding right so this is what this is for calling the embedding uh, a embedding uh, like class which is there inside the open ai platform now here what i'm going to do i'm going to call this chroma right chroma is there which i imported just just look into the, uh, this chroma okay which uh, i had imported somewhere let me show you and we are consuming uh, this as a object this chroma just uh, wait so somewhere i have imported this thing mm -hmm. where it is where it is imported chroma import chroma yeah pip show chroma db uh, i think i have imported somewhere in between you you can check in a file itself i have imported now here after that what i need to i need to call this particular method from document right now here i am going to pass the text this is my embedding and this is my directory right in which i want to process the embedding so here i have created this vector db right so as soon as i did it now here you will find out we are going to create this we have this particular directory inside this we have this uh we have this a uh, bin file there you will find out there you will find out your embeddings and all right and it is using the sql3 server in backend right this is fine now persist the db to the disk if i want to persist this i'm just going to call i'm just going to call this vector db dot persist right now here if you look into that so here i'm going to call this chroma right persist db this is my directory now here is what here is my embedding okay now if i'm going to run it so here i'm getting my vector db right so from the disk itself i am able to get this vector db so here actually we have the date see if i will run it now if i will show you this vector db this one so there you will find out this is what this is my database means i am able to persist okay i am able to persist this data i am able to persist this data in my local disk and by using this particular object we can access that now let me show you how you can do that okay just wait so here i am writing uh, the next thing which you want to do so here i am writing this make retriever so just a second here i am going to write it down this make retriever now you want to make a retriever basically and for that what i am going to do so here i am going to call this one more method uh, which is uh, which this uh, function is having the method name is what as a retriever right so there is what this will be what this will be my retriever now what i can do guys just wait i can give you this entire code so you all can run inside your system so i'm passing or i'm giving you this on the uh, like codeshare.io so you can get the entire code from there itself so just a second i am passing it over here i'm giving you inside my uh i'm giving you this inside the codeshare.io just just copy from there and uh, here the last method which you need to call this is going to be a as retriever so just a second 
now we just need to cover few of the few thing and then i'm going to wrap up it so here guys you can see <coughs> we have a retriever we are after calling this particular method we are able to click uh, we are able to create a retriever now what i will do here just just focus right just focus so here I'm going to run this particular method by using this retriever get relevant document right so here I'm going to run this uh, this particular method the method name is what the method name is get relevant document and here I am going to pass one question the question is that how much money did Microsoft raise right how much money did Microsoft raise so this is the question based on an article if you look into the article if you try to read the news right so there you will find out somewhere related to the Microsoft and related to the different different startups so here I want to here basically I have created a retrieval right which is there uh, we have a function actually this method vector db dot uh, as retrieval so this is what this is my retrieval now here I am going to call this get a relevant document so what it will do so it will uh, search inside the entire DB and based on that it will generate an answer. So let's see what I will be getting over here. So yes, if I am running it and now inside the docs, right? Now let me show you inside the docs that what I have. So here you can see I am getting a document, right? I am getting an answer. Here I have created a retrieval and whatever question I am asking, right? So it is matching, it is checking. And here I'm getting an answer how this thing is happening. Let me explain you. So what I can do, I can open my uh, blackboard and there itself I can explain you about it. So just a second. Uh, what is happening? See what I'm going to do here. So let's say we have a data, right? Just a second guys. Yeah. So we have a data and the data actually what I'm going to do. Tell me. So this data I'm going to be. Uh, this data actually the whatever data is there I'm going to convert into a embeddings embedding by using what tell me so by using this open AI API so here I can mention the open AI API now let's say we have this open AI API got it now this open AI by you this this basically this embedding uh, whatever embedding I'm going to generate I'm able to keep inside my inside my tell me guys inside my chroma db right from here to chroma db let me create one more box over here so here actually what I'm going to do I'm going to keep inside my chroma database got it right now this is fine this is perfect okay and this chroma db actually it is available in the local disk space it is available in my local disk space now it is using this sql light server it is using the sql light server in backend right and here it is storing the data in the form of binary file got it now here whatever data which we are going to store inside my chroma db now i want to retrieve it means i want to make a request from this data right so what i want to do guys i want to make a request from here so what i will do for that uh so actually see i want to make a request so the request will work in which way so let's say we have created a retriever right so let me let me create a retriever over here so let's say we have created a retriever now just a second here is what here is what here is my retriever now let me write it down the retriever over here this is what is my retriever now i want to retrieve the data i also here let's say this is what chroma db is having a database so this is what this is my database right mm, okay great 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 so this one this one and this one right so this is the database where we are going to store the embedding now what i will do i am going to retrieve the data so for that i have created an object of the retriever now i make a query so from here basically i make a query so here let's say this is what this is my query okay just a second let me define the query over here query okay query now i made a query and this query actually see the request is going the request is going from here from here from here to this database right this one and from here actually what i'm getting in response if you will look into the response so in the response actually i'm getting an output right 
so the response will be coming from here and it is going like this this one and this one right so this is what tell me this is the response which i am getting so here i am making a request from here this is what this is my request this is also my request right and here what i am getting i am getting a response right this is what this is my response got it now here actually what i am doing so here i am going to perform the similarity search right so in this request and response actually the thing which we are going to perform we are going to perform the similarity search and based on that, based on a similarity search itself, based on its semantic meaning, it is generating a final output, right? So as a retriever, actually what I'm getting, I'm getting a final output and based on the semantic search, it is generating that a final output. I hope now the architecture is pretty much clear to all of you. Let's start with the coding again. So here I'm getting uh, all the, like uh, whatever a question I've asked. So based on that, it is going to generate output and here you can see the first output second output and all let's check with the first output so it has generated uh, like a different different output not a single one and here if i'm going to check with the page content so you will find out that we have the entire detail right so here you will find out the entire detail regarding this a particular question so in this particular question you will find out the entire detail now you can check the length of the document also so what i can do here so what you can do here so here you can write it on this docs and there you'll find out it is generating a four answer by default it is giving me a four answer got it now this is fine this is clear now what i can do i can uh like uh, i can call one more method just to wait so here actually in the retriever itself we have a different different method sorry in the vector database we have a different different method so here i have called this uh, as a retriever right as a retriever now here is what here is my retriever now by using this retriever i am going to call this get relevant document everything you will find out in our, inside the document itself just go and check with the chroma db documentation we have uploaded or uh, sorry not basically we so they have uploaded everything over there in a very detailed way just go and check every function every method i am going to take from there itself right so i i am going to take from there itself just go and check with the documentation now over here guys see uh we have a retriever now here i can define the key also so search kwr kwrgs k equal to two so there will be only two output now here if i'm going to call it now you will find out what i'm going to do so i'm going to call this a particular uh keyword search retriever dot k search kwrgs so you'll find out two so we'll be getting two output only so if you are going to search it now if you are going to search any sort of a question so let's say here is my question is what here is my question uh, retriever dot get relevant document and here how much uh, did microsoft raise so let's see in the document 2 what i will be getting so here in the document 2 uh, let me show you first of all let me show you the length of this document 2 so here is the length of the document will be 2 so i am getting only two document I am getting only two document as a relevant one. Means it is performing a similarity search. So in a backend itself, in a backend itself, there is a vector and there will be also a vector. Each and each and everything is going to be uh, like uh, each and every permutation is going to be formed. And based on a similarity search, okay, based on a similarity search, it is providing me a output. So here you can see it is giving me a two output as of now. Now if you will look into this doc two, so there you will find out only two output, right? So here. You can see we just have two output so initially actually by default it was giving me four so i hope this thing is clear to all of you now here i want to do one thing i want to make it more realistic right what i want to do guys tell me so first of all let me give you this particular code so at least you can also uh generate some limited output vector db as a retriever and here is the next one is what so just a second vector db retriever so this is for the by default and here this next one actually it is for the two only right so here we have defined the two so get how much microsoft money so here actually this is what this is my docs two got it guys yes or no tell me did you got it yes yes or no guys tell me please copy the code from here please be active i understand it is like it is it is uh, about to two hour now so so please be active guys see i i have a same energy now you have to keep you have to learn with the same energy 
ओके आई हैवन डाउन माय एनर्जी एंड आई एम आई एम लाइक एक्सप्लेनिंग यू विद द सेम एनर्जी आई अंडरस्टैंड इनिशियली थिंग विल गेट इन अ मोर इफेक्टिव वे बट एज वी आर प्रोग्रेसिंग विद द सेशन सो वी लूज आर लाइक फोकस वी लूज आर लाइक फोकस एंड ऑल एंड सो डोंट डू लाइक दैट ओके सो जस्ट बी एक्टिव जस्ट बी एक्टिव फॉर फॉर मोर टेन मिनट एंड या we are going to wrap up this thing so you will be ready with the vector databases now in the next class easily we can implement the project right easily we can implement the project and we can perform the rag retrieval document generator so this vector database we use for the rag only for the retriever augmented generation and is going to play a very important role if you are going to create any sort of a application related to the llms right related to the generative ai where you are going to use llm so please guys be take a take it serious and yes in interview they will ask you the same thing right i have seen many requirement whatever requirements uh, people are having right are related to the generative ai related to the llm and they are specifically they have mentioned chroma db pine cone right because this is a trend actually right P people are able to uh, use it people are able to productionize it right people are able to achieve whatever they want right with respect to their use case and all and yes as a techie you have to solve this thing you have to take care of this thing so please be serious over here now uh here guys see we are able to retrieve the document a similar document by using this particular method right now everything you will find out over the documentation if you want to understand in a more depth go and check with the documentation now let's try to understand the next concept so here you can see we have a doc too now let's do one thing let's make it more interactive and so for that here i have written something uh, so let's make a chain now what i can do i can make a chain and here guys for that here is uh, one uh, library you will find out inside the length chain itself the library is going to be retrieval qa now let me run it and yes we are able to import this retrieval qa retrieval means you just need to retrieve it retrieve it you just need to get it right retrieve means response right so here you can see we have this retrieval qa now what i will do guys here i am going to use my llm model so i am going to call my open ai api because i want to i want to get a uh, see here if you if you will find out in the response so just just look into the response here so just just print this particular response mm what i can do i can print it now see the response so they are giving you the response and they are mentioning everything over there now how to make it more interactive and how to work with it like a question answering right question answering so for that you'll find out this retrieval qa over here now here i'm going to use my llm now you will find out the use of the llm over here what is the use or i will show you one architecture so here i shown you the simple architecture which i have uh, created by myself only here you can see clearly you can understand everything i will show you one more architecture and i will show you what is the role of this llm over here what is the role of the llm over here right now just wait let me uh, show you that or uh, first of all let me run it uh, here i have written couple of thing so let me show you the llm first see we have we are going to call open api and by default we have the uh, by default we have the model gpt model got it now what i am going to do here i am going to create a chain by using this a particular method so retrieval qa from chain type so llm open ai model and here we have a retriever object retriever is there this one okay retriever is there and here you will find out the document so return source document is true so you just need to pass two thing here the first is what up r model and the second one is retriever so retriever is here this one okay this one so we are going to collect it from the vector db this retriever right so here vector db as a retriever so this is my retriever and by using this retriever only we are getting a information if we are whatever we are passing as a question and we are using this method and this is what this is my dogs so this retriever object also we are passing over here so we have a llm model we have a retriever and here two more parameter right now let me run it and here you can see we are able to generate or we are able to create a ob object and which i am going to store in qhn right now guys here what i can do i have written one more method so let me copy and paste it over here and one more method and after that the thing will be more clear to all of you so what i am doing over here see uh, this is the two method which i have pasted right two are uh, two code uh, two codes 
code is snippet basically which i pasted over here so here see we want to create a retriever qa so just just check what is the meaning of that just open the google and uh search it uh, over the google now paste it over here and search about the retrieval qa so what is this retrieval qa everything you will find out inside the lang channel guys believe me this lang channel is very much powerful right uh whether whatever uh, like framework you are going to learn in future i don't care llama index and all but please try to learn this lang channel if you want to build llm based application so just take a mastery on top of this lang channel it's a important one now here you will find out what is this retrieval qa so this example so case question answering over an index right the following example combining a retrieval with a question answering chain to do question answering right so here i just want to make a question answering chain and here is a complete uh, code snippet here is a complete example which they have given to you now what i can do here i can uh, show you that how that this uh, two thing is working now this is what this is the from chain type which i called create a chain to answer the question now see process llm response so llm response is there right whatever LL see first of all see this is the query now here we are passing a query now this is what this is the query which we are getting now llm response see here what we are going to do see this is what uh here from here basically uh what i see step by step let me show you so first of all let me run it right this one now what i will do here so this is what this is my query right so here is what here is my query how much money did microsoft raise right now what i can do here uh i can uh like call this particular uh method right so what is the method guys tell me here this one is qa chain right so here is what here is a qa chain this one this one so i'm passing this query to my qa chain right so let me run it and here you will find out the llm response so let me copy it and let me paste it over here so this is what guys see this is your llm response this one right so here what i'm doing i'm see uh retrieval qa right you you are talking about the reg na retrieval augment generation so it is related to that only it is related to this only it's an advanced concept so this is a basic reg which we have created this is a basic reg which we have created where we are not going to generate directly answer from my llm no we are not going to do that here we are going to pass this retriever object this particular object and from there actually we are going to generate an answer from here see we have a open ai model llm model we are not going to ask we are not going to generate a response from the open ai from the llm model right it is just for the refinement right it is just for the refinement or for the better understanding it is not if you are not going to train it na if you are not going to train this model on top of this data and if you are passing this retriever if you are passing this retriever object over here means you are passing the embedding you are passing your database you are passing your data over here right so instead of instead of generating a data instead of generating answer from the model it is it is it is giving you the answer from the embedding itself llm is here just for the refinement right just to understand it is not going to generate an answer and this is only called retrieval augment generated generate generator retrieval augment generator and here you are going to achieve this thing by using this vector data base by using this vector data base so here you are going to call this llm right here is llm have you created a function calling have you created a function calling so it is working similar to that if you are aware about the function calling where i am using a llm but llm is not generating answer some third party api is giving me answer right so it is working in a similar way here is my llm and this is what this is my retriever which is nothing which is my embedding so here i passed my query and it has generated an answer this llm response now guys what i want to do i want a response so where it is tell me it is there inside the source document so here what i am going to do so i am passing my llm response over here and from the result so this is my result and this is my complete uh, like a answer which is which it is giving to me so here actually this llm we are using for the refinement for the refined answer see see over here now if i am running it this one what i am doing i am going to run it see this i am going to run this one so it is giving me a so it is giving me this a uh, particular uh it is giving me this uh, like a particular answer this is for the refinement llm is not for the generation answer generation answer this is the answer which we are generating from the document itself from the database itself based on a similarity search 
right and this is only called rag retrieval augment generation and here this chat gpt or this uh, like a gpt model we are using for the refinement so it is giving me a final answer so already i have written a code over here so we are get extracting a result and we are printing a result and here is a metadata and all whatever is there so we can print that also so this is the metadata resources now guys tell me did you get the concept of the rg did you get the concept of the vector database did you get that how to like uh, do the question answering after generating an embedding and all in my previous class also i shown you the same thing in the previous class i created a while loop and i was giving the queries and all and i was generating an answer you can do the same thing over here and you can create your question answering system you can create your chatbot which we are going to do in the next class so this is just a like a basic introduction and in the next class we are going to create our application by using this a particular concept now tell me are you getting it guys yes or no tell me how many people are able to understand yes or no tell me fast whatever explanation i have given you regarding that how many people are able to understand yes sir uh, we have existing qa system what is uh, what is the difference between exist system and llm model exist system is this one na this is your data see let me revise this thing what i can do here uh, where it is okay this one now what i can do here itself i can revise this thing just a second okay so i have one image let me show you that a particular image just a second so this is the image right this is the image can you see this image guys this one is it visible to all of you this this particular image tell me guys fast so this is the image actually which i created for uh, for the project actually this is the project flow now let's try to understand what is happening over here right so i can explain you this thing in a like uh, clear manner manner just just see just focus over here right now what is happening see uh, do you have a data does it say yes or no until you won't say yes i won't proceed so this is the data right are we extract are we converting a data so are we are we extracting a data yes so this is my first step this is my second step right now here you can see this is my third step now here you can see this is what this is my fourth step this one right this is what this is my fourth step now after that what i am going to do so here i am going to save my data in my vector store in my chroma db so either i can store chroma db or vector database tell me so here either i can store chroma db or vector hey, hi database everyone. so i think you all are enjoying sunny's class right <laughs> sunny's lecture bhai sunny chal raha hai na sahi se yeah bade koi dikkat nahi hai maza aa raha hai hum dekh rahe hain aap dekh rahe hain acha lag raha hai ye abhi to sujhe aage thank you bol de ek baar sunny ko thanks okay so guys here you can see so this is what here we are going to store the data in a chroma db itself right so in a chroma db yahan pe uh, here actually we are going to store the data in a chroma db now see if user is going to query right if user is going to query now what will happen if user is going to query this thing now what will happen see uh here let's say this is what this is my user okay just wait let me remove it from here mm, yeah so this is the user right so we have a data over here we have created a data uh so this is what this is my data where i have saved my embedding right so here i have saved my embedding now here you will find out the embedding now here is a user this is what this is the user now here user is asking the question right user is asking the question now here we will search like query embedding right and based on that so we'll go into the database and here see from the database we'll retrieve the answer and llm will refine the answer right llm will refine the answer just just look into the arrow so what is the role of the llm over here llm is just for the refinement because the embedding we are going to the embedding right so whatever embedding is there right so this embedding actually uh this data we are going to fetch from the db itself right so here is a, see till here everything is fine see this is the work of the uh this is the work of the developer till here now let's say user will ask the question so the question will come over here 
it is going to uh, do a semantic search and all and it is going to take a answer and here from here actually it is taking an answer and then it is going to rank the result so in that in my case i am getting two result right or three result or four result now what i will do here so it will pass to my llm model and this llm model will give me a final answer now it is getting clear how the flow is happening how the how the thing is working over here tell me guys fast how the thing is working over here did you get it guys yes or no got it now so that is a thing which we have implemented in a jupyter notebook now by using that so this thing actually we can use this this particular thing we can use inside our application right and we can create one qa system so from the data whatever data we have from the data the data basically the files which we have our data from there basically we can get answer and llm can refine that particular answer i can give the direct answer also from the database or i can refine the answer so that is a use of the vector database now in the next class we are going to create a in the next class we are going to create a application and that's going to be a chatbot application and literally you will enjoy if you are able to understand this today's session so tell me guys how was the session how much you would like to rate to this uh, application and and whatever i have uh, done over here so tell me guys fast if you have any query any doubt you can let me know i will give you this entire code and here is the uh, like i can give you this particular code as well i hope i have already pasted in the mm, just a second so let me give you this uh, two thing the first is going to be a qhn this one and the second is going to be this one uh just a second this one. okay so i given you the both code now what i can do here so this is the code and yeah now you can query you can ask anything whatever query whatever like uh, uh data actually we have based on that you can query you can take a bigger database right and uh, yeah now i think uh, you are able to get it mm, yeah this one so fine i hope uh, this part is clear to all of you now please go through with the code please try to run inside your system just copy from here and run inside your jupyter notebook data and all each and everything i have provided to you i have already given you and uh, yeah now if you want to see if you want to stop the database if you want to uh, means uh, the database the database basically which you have created right so if you want to stop it if you want to uh, delete it if you want to uh, like uh, clean it so for that also we have a command let me give you uh, those a particular command so here you just need to so first of all let me write down the heading and the heading is what so heading is uh, you can delete the database so delete the db now you can see uh, what you can do guys you can delete the db and here uh, what you need to do so you need to read this uh, gif uh, you need to like uh, create this gif file actually this gif by using first of all you need to zip it actually the entire thing is there just you need to zip it and after that what you will do you will run this uh, particular command so let me give you this two command the two command the first one is de delete collection and the second one vector dot process right so to clean up entire thing you just need to call this two thing and here the last one you can delete this zip directory so here is the directory which you are going to delete means here is the folder the entire folder where you will be having the zip directory you are going to delete that and yes finally you will be able to delete your data base the data base basically which you have created by using this chroma db so yes or no guys uh, tell me uh, if you got everything then yes it is well and got if you are if you didn't get then uh, definitely you should revise the thing everything will be available over the dashboard so just uh, go and check with the dashboard let me show you the dashboard mm, just a second so here the session is going on now let me show you the dashboard also this is the dashboard guys uh, this one so just just check with the dashboard just enroll to this dashboard and apart from that you can explore the course as well the course which we have launched on a generative ai here is a course and there you will find out everything the concept which i have explained you over here we are going to explain in a more detailed way 
we are going to clarify more thing regarding this RAG or regarding this uh, like different different uh, tuning and all parametric tuning this that whatever everything we are going to clarify over here so just go uh, go and check uh, with this uh, website with the iNeuron website just go and explore the course this uh, just go and explore this generative AI course everything you will be finding out over here just just explore the syllabus okay this is the syllabus and if you want anything if you want any update anything let's say this is the new one right which we have launched right so if you want anything any recent thing which uh, on which you are working in a, a market in your organization you can let us know you can let me know you can ping me you can uh, write it down on my linkedin right so based on that um, if there will that will be like uh that uh, I, I will consider i will uh, think about that and if it is really going to be an important one so i will add on inside the syllabus okay immediately i will add on inside the syllabus and we are going to take it inside the live class so i hope uh, this is fine to everyone now we can wrap up the session and from next class onwards we are going to start with one more project and that's going to be on monday monday 6 uh, sorry monday 3 pm ist and yes so i'm not going to take that session uh, Bappi will be available for that uh, particular session Bappi will uh, start with a project and all if you don't know about the Bappi, so i can show you the profile of the Bappi. just uh over the open the linkedin and search the uh, search uh Bappi, okay now Bappi, the full form name the full name is a boktiar ahmed Bappi. just uh, open the profile of the Bappi, and he's like really good mentor you can visit his youtube channel as well his this is the youtube channel of the Bappi. there you will find out the like content related to the computer vision and all so just go inside the video he is having a amazing content related to the computer vision and you can go and check you can check with the ml ops content as well everything he he has kept over the youtube so you can visit the youtube channel so next class will be taken by the Bappi and yes in that we are going to implement one more project so monday tuesday and wednesday fine so i hope guys this is clear to everyone now there is one question sir can you provide one end-to-end -end project for interview purpose yes we are going to implement that in a next class in the next uh in the next uh basically class and uh, don't worry you will find out a project soon in my internship on, my, on the internship portal as well so let me uh, show you the internship portal where it is just click on this click on the internship portal and here okay so you will uh, find out all the projects and all as of now we haven't uh, updated uh, related to the generative ai it is in a pipeline i already given to my team the work is go work is uh, going on on top of that so there is uh, there are like couple of use cases related to the different different domain which is a which is directly related to the real world so you can explore that you can uh, like go through with that and then you can start your internship and you can generate a certificate you can generate an experience certificate and you can uh, write it down that particular project in a in a resume also see one thing i would like to tell you let's say you if you are uh, like whatever i'm ex uh, like telling you whatever i'm teaching you let's say i'm not able to teach 100 percent but i'm giving you the direction let's say i taught you 50 percent thing but rest of the 50 percent i've given you the direction right so rest of the rest 50 percent thing i've given you in terms of uh, the direction and all so try to explore the, those things by yourself uh, uh, like anywhere you won't be able to find out that one mentor is uh, doing everything for you let's say you ask about the inter you ask about this uh, like uh, one project which i can show you in a in, uh, in a like interview and all or which i can show you uh, somewhere so guys i guided you up to certain point right now it's your chance you can find out the different different use cases and you can implement those by taking my reference and in that you can add on few more things right then only you will be able to get the interview if you are going to take a same project from me and you are going to uh, like you are going in an interview then you won't be able to crack it because you won't be having that confidence that knowledge okay which is required in an interview which you will get once you will do by yourself okay so keep this thing in your mind and learn according to that and yes definitely you, will, you can crack any interview this is not a big deal you just need to represent yourself your work that's it okay so thank you guys thank you for attending this session from next class onwards we are going to start one more project and please do revise the thing whatever we have learned in today's session in today's class here is the entire file here is the entire content just go through with that and yeah thank you bye bye take care
if you have any doubt you can write it down on the over the linkedin and please share your uh, learning as well uh, over the linkedin you can tag me i will look into that i will like it i will share it okay so thank you guys bye bye take care have a great day ahead thank you